A power bank is a super useful tool and I believe everyone should have one. Did you know it's actually super easy and cheap to build one yourself? We can get electronics ready to go online and the battery itself are also very easy to source. All we need to put it together is a 3D printer to create a case, a soldering iron and some time. Let me show you. I'm Chris and this is Living Room Workbench. The part of this is rather short. Next to some basic tools, a 3D printer and a soldering iron, we need an IP5328P, which you can get for 3 to 4 euros on AliExpress. This is the controller board we will use. It offers us two USB-A ports with fast charging and one USB-C port with 18W USB-C power delivery. We also can use the USB-C port to charge the power bank itself. Also, we need 4, 6 or 8 18650 battery cells, costing around 3 euros each. To print all the parts, around 100 grams of your favorite filament are needed. We also need some wires, not too thin, I use 18 gauge wires. 6 6 mm M3 screws with a countersunk head and optionally, but highly recommend, a male and a female XT30 plug to easily connect and disconnect the batteries and also optionally some scrap acrylic glass with 2 mm thickness to let the LEDs shine better through the case. As an important disclaimer right at the beginning, be very careful with the batteries and do not short them. They are not protected in any way. This is also why I use a plug between the batteries and the board, as it makes it easier to work with the batteries. You can't switch them off, obviously, so you work with a live circuit when soldering directly to the board. Also, a word of caution. I'd recommend you to not get the 18650 cells on AliExpress or Banggood. The batteries sold there are usually very poor quality and never hold up to their specs. I searched mine from a local company. Make sure to buy a branded cell from Samsung, LG, Panasonic or any other known brand. As a general rule, those cells never exceed 3,500 million hours. So if you see some with 6,000 or 10,000, stay away as far as you can. I'll link a video in the description below testing Chinese 18650 battery cells. It's really hilarious. As a good practice, make sure to measure the voltage of your batteries when you get them. They should all be equal voltage and not below 3 volts. Slicing is straightforward. I printed my parts one by one as I used different colors for the inner part and for the shell. I also recommend printing the button separately. It's a two minute print and as we see later you might need more than one attempt. By the way, if you want to see how I constructed this power bank and what thoughts went into it, I documented the entire process. Link in the description, check it out. I used supports for the inner part only on the front to prevent the top of the port colors from setting. The shell is printed upright. Make sure that your slicer sets the set seam in the round corner as this will help it to be a little bit more subtle. Overall, the print for 6 cell version takes around 10 hours. Everything is sliced, let's print. I plan to show you now how to solder all the parts together, but unfortunately the footage is basically one hour of my hair, so I will just show you the end product and give you some tips. I started by putting the cells into the printed part and securing them with some painter's tape. I also always cover one side of the battery ports with electrical tape while working, to prevent any accidental shorts. Cut two pieces of wire long enough to span all batteries. One wire should be slightly longer so you can fold the cable in place later. Solve by soldering the plug to one end of the wires. Remove the isolation from one of the wires so the part of the wire which is in contact with the batteries is blank. Slightly twist the wire strands together. Now place a heat resistant material under the tabs of the batteries. I use my trusty printer spatula. Again, make sure to not short something out. You can now solder the wire to the tabs. The spatula protects the casing of the batteries from the heat. Make sure you solder the wire connected to the plug's negative side to the negative side of the batteries and vice versa. You can also solder the wires to the side of the batteries. There's enough space, but again, it's not recommended to solder directly to the batteries. 
Once you are done, cover the contacts with electrical tape and repeat the process on the other side. Now, cut two shorter pieces of wire, one again longer than the other, and solder the other part of the XC30 plug to them. Solder the other end of the wire to the controller board, matching the polarity. The cable should be cut in a way so you can fold the plug into the available space. My positive lead from the control board was slightly too short, but it worked out. The last part to make everything work is the button on the side. This button will allow you to see the charge with the LEDs on the other side. The button consists of two parts, the pusher and the outer button. I printed the button upright so that the print pattern will match the case. Firstly, we need to make sure that the pusher can easily move in a little hole holding it in place. You'll maybe need to do a little filing here. After this, we can install the electronics board. Make sure that pressing the pusher presses the button on the board. Most likely, the button is pressed all the time right now because the pusher is slightly too long. File off some material on the side in contact with the button until you can press it nicely. With this out of the way, we can install the outer button in the shell. You can secure it with a piece of tape so it doesn't fall out. It should also be able to move freely. After connecting the electronics to the batteries, we can slide the inner part into the shell. Don't put too much force to it, but the batteries should be quite snug. Make sure you can press the button on the outside. If you can't press it, the pusher is too long on the side facing the button. File off some material and test again. This process may take a couple of attempts. Spend some time and make it work nicely. It will pay off. As a last touch, we can cut out four pieces of acrylic glass to sit in between the fins flanking the LEDs. You can 3D print the guide and then just file off material from the acrylic glass until everything fits. Also, the guide does not consider the LED itself, so after test fitting it, you need to file a little notch into the acrylic glass so the LED sits flush against it. This part is optional, the power bank will obviously work nicely without the acrylic glass and the LEDs are still visible. Doing this will make the LEDs a little bit brighter from the outside and makes it easier to see them from an angle. When you're happy with the fit, add a drop of glue to fix the parts in place. From now on it will be very hard to remove the electronics, so make sure to do this last. As a little touch, I will show you how to add a custom engraving to the shell in a future video to truly make this power bank your own. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss this video. Building a power bank is really not that complicated. The version I built for myself with 20,000 million powers is also cheaper than a store-bought one with the same specs. And think of all the fun we had putting it together and how great you feel every time you use it. This is it for today. Enjoy your power bank. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, happy building.